In this lesson, I'm going to be looking at the National 5 climate change topic. As you'll see, climate change appears in section 3 of the exam paper, and it is one of the global issues. Now, this topic is an optional topic, and you must choose two from the global issues section, which appears as section 3. You can see the choices that are available to you. Climate change always appears as the first question in section 3, and your teacher should have told you which global issues you are planning to study. Now, if you are planning on answering a global issues exam question, there are some key points you should remember. First of all, it is an optional topic, and therefore you must be sure that you have studied this in class. Second of all, the question is made up of two parts. Part A will always be a described question and will always be worth four marks. Part B is an explain question and will always be worth six marks. I'm now going to look at two different aspects. First of all, I'm going to explain to you the different learning outcomes that you need to ensure you have revised in preparation for an assessment that includes the global issues topic of climate change. Second of all, I will practice some exam questions with you and give you some idea about the type of things you should be writing in response to the different questions that you are likely to encounter. Now, there are four key learning outcomes that make up the climate change topic. The first of these is your ability to describe a graph or a map that gives you some information about climate change. And you can see exactly that skill is broken down into two key outcomes. I'll practice an example of each of these questions later on in today's tutorial. The second learning outcome is to be able to explain the causes of climate change. Now, if you encounter this question, it would always be worth six marks, and you are more than likely having to explain the physical or natural and human causes of climate change. The third main learning outcome is that you have to explain how climate change is affecting the planet. Now, as you can see from the learning outcome, this would often be worded as the consequences of climate change, and your answer should refer to how climate change is affecting people and the landscape. Final learning outcome refers to explaining how we can manage or solve the problems relating to climate change. And here your actual solutions should refer to things that have been done in different places across the planet to try to tackle the problem of climate change. So that is a summary of the main learning outcomes. Let's now have a look at some typical exam questions you're likely to encounter. In this first example of an exam question, you can see a graph. Now, there are two things to bear in mind before answering the question. First of all, this is a described question. You are not being asked to give reasons that explain why the change is happening in the graph. Rather, you're just being asked to describe what the graph shows. And you need to do this in detail, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. The second thing to bear in mind is that this is worth four marks, so you'd be expected to make four statements referring to this question. Now, the first top tip when answering a question that has a graph is to give the overall pattern of change from the start to the finish. Now, because this graph happens to show us two lines, one which is carbon dioxide concentrations, the other which is the average global temperature, we would want to do that for both. For example, I might say the carbon dioxide concentration in 1880 was at roughly 290 parts per million and has risen to 400 parts per million by the year 2010. That would get me a mark. My second point might be that the average global temperatures in 1880, and this time I would need to go across to the other side of the graph, were at 13.6 degrees centigrade and has risen to roughly 14.6 degrees centigrade by the year 2010. What you'll notice in both of those points is that I am giving you dates from the x-axis and I'm giving you amounts 
from the y-axis. What I've also done is describe the overall pattern of change. What I now want to do is break down my lines. I might therefore talk about the fact that the CO2 concentrations were only rising slowly up until about the year 1940, rising no higher than about 310. I might then say from 1940 to the year 2010, CO2 concentrations have increased much more rapidly over that period of time. That would get me a mark. My average global temperatures line does a lot more change, so what I might want to do here is pick up on some significant changes. For example, in 1900, I can see there was a dramatic increase in global temperatures, rising from about 13.7 degrees to about 13.9 degrees in this short space of time, between about 1895 and 1900. I might also pick up the sharp drop between 1900 and 1910, right, falling from 13.9 to about 13.7. What's important here is that I'm identifying key bits of information on the graph, key dates, and the amounts of change. I need to make sure I have four statements in my answer that includes dates and information in terms of data. In my second example of describing patterns, this time we are looking at a map. Now the same rule applies to this question. It is a described question. There is no requirement to explain. Second of all, it is once again worth four marks. That means I need four statements. This time, however, it is a pattern on a map, so I approach it slightly differently. But I still want to give data from, in this case, my key. And this time, I, instead of referring to dates, I'm going to be referring to areas of the planet. So for example, I may say, there has been a up to negative two degrees temperature change in areas around Antarctica. Areas that have warmed by two degrees can be found in the northern region of Africa or in the southwestern corner of Africa. What you'll notice by that description, and this is why it is in detail, is rather than mention Africa, I've actually given geographic areas of Africa. I might want to say that areas that have warmed by one degrees can be found across the central area of North America. I could say are found down the western coast of South America or in the central regions of Africa. All the way through this, I am referring to my key and I am mentioning specific areas of the globe. If there is a global pattern present where you notice a whole area of the planet has a certain temperature, for example, the whole of the Atlantic Ocean is risen by one degrees, I'd want to make that kind of statement. And as I said in the last example, you'd want to make sure your answer included four statements backed up by areas of the planet and information from the key. Okay, we're now going to look at a series of explain questions. These questions are always worth six marks and the command word explain requires us to give reasons for the points that we've just described. Because it's worth six marks, my answer should include six points. Now in this example, we are looking at the causes of climate change and we are asked to describe physical and human causes. So what I might choose to do is identify three physical causes three human causes, explain all of them, and I'll get my six marks. Now, you may have been taught a wide range of physical and human causes and may know far more than six. Let's just have a look at some possible physical causes. So the first physical cause you might mention could be volcanic eruptions. Volcanoes emit gases. These travel high into the atmosphere and can block radiation from the sun, therefore causing the planet to cool. That would be a climate change caused by volcanic activity. A second physical cause could be linked to solar activity. This is to do with the amount of radiation that comes from the sun. Now, because the amount of solar radiation coming from the sun can vary across a period of time, it is possible for the planet Earth to receive more or less solar radiation, which would influence the climate of our planet, causing it to either rise or fall. A third cause of climate change could be changes in ocean currents. 
In the Pacific Ocean, for example, there is an ocean current that changes once every five or six years in a phenomenon called El Nino. The change of this ocean current causes widespread rains in one part of the planet, whereas in other parts it causes droughts. And this is all to do with the changes in this ocean current and the different weather that those ocean currents would normally bring. And that would be a third change caused by something natural. There are some other factors, for example, to do with the axis tilt or the axis wobble or the actual orbit of our planet around the sun. And all of these may have been explained to you in class and could be used as physical explanations. Human causes, that is to do with ourselves, are wide ranging and you have been taught a range of different points. The first one you may wish to identify might be changes in carbon dioxide caused by human activity. For example, you may explain that the increase in car ownership in the 20th century has led to the burning of fossil fuels in petrol engines. The emissions from these vehicles have led to a dramatic increase in carbon dioxide. You might also mention that the destruction of the rainforests has resulted in the planets having a less or lower ability to absorb CO2 out of the atmosphere and that is why there is an increase in the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. Another point you could make could be to do with another gas responsible for climate change which is methane. You could explain that the increase in methane in the atmosphere has to do with the increase in the amount of cattle on the planet. It is estimated there could be up to 5 billion cows on the planet and cows emit high levels of methane when they eat grass. The final one you could mention could be nitrous oxide. This is a gas that is emitted through fertilizers that are put on to crops to grow food. And because we are now producing more food and using these chemical fertilizers, there's been a dramatic increase in nitrogen oxide in the atmosphere. All of those points I've mentioned are possible physical or human causes of climate change. Here we see another example of a typical explain question. It is explained, therefore I must be giving reasons. It is worth six marks, therefore my answer should contain six points. It also asks me to refer to examples and I'll show you how to do that when making the point. This question asks you for the effects, or it might be worded as the consequences of climate change on people and the environment. You may have studied a country like Bangladesh. Bangladesh is suffering from rising sea levels because it is a very flat country. To explain why sea levels are rising, you would want to then explain that the ice in the northern regions of the planet and in Antarctica is melting rapidly, causing our ocean levels to rise. Therefore, flat countries like Bangladesh are being inundated with more water. That is a typical point that you would make. Your answer refers to a place in the world. It explains why the problem is happening and then you would go on to explain why that is a problem. So why would a flat country being flooded by water be a problem? First of all, you could explain that that is leading to less land for cultivation, which means there is less food being produced in Bangladesh. You might also explain that people that are living in these regions no longer have land to live on, and therefore they're having to abandon their homes to move to large cities in northern Bangladesh. And therefore, from that point, you would be scoring two marks. What I would suggest you do is some research, possibly using the BBC Bite Size website or resources given to you by your teacher to explore a range of effects or consequences of climate change and make sure that your notes contain real world examples. In our final example in today's lesson, we are going to look at another explain question, this time one that is dealing with strategies to minimise the problems. So these are effectively the solutions to climate change. Once again, this is a six mark question and it is an explain question, so you should be giving reasons. I would suggest for this type of question that you use actual examples. 
let's have a look at some points that you might write. You might explain that more and more people should be encouraged to use electric cars rather than cars using fossil fuels. You might go on to explain that the government could give subsidies and grants to people to buy electric cars to encourage them to use these types of cars. The final point you'd want to make is why do we want to use electric cars? What you could explain there is that electric cars do not burn fossil fuels and therefore do not contribute to climate change to the same level as normal petrol driven cars. And that would be an explained in detail strategy used to minimise climate change. A second solution you could explain is that more and more people should recycle. What recycling does is it reduces the amount of raw materials that need to be converted into products like plastics and metals because we're recycling rather than needing to make them from scratch. What this means is a lot less energy needs to be consumed in the creation of new products because we are simply recycling old products. This would be a solution to climate change. What I suggest you do for this is you ensure that you have six solutions that explore local things, things that you as an individual could do, as well as solutions that countries are doing, for example, building more wind farms that create clean green energy, as well as things that are happening on a planetary level through international agreements made by different governments. As long as your answer has six solutions and you're able to give reasons and explain what that solution is solving, so what part of climate change or what problem created by climate change is being reduced by your solution, you would get six marks. And that concludes today's lesson looking at climate change, which is one of the global issues available in the exam paper.